everybody. My name is Marek, and I'm a staff software engineer at Vector Database Company, Panko. In this presentation, we will look at some common and maybe not so common pitfalls in writing high-performance systems in Rust. So to start things off, as a first example, we'll look at how to reduce the memory consumption of scatter-gather operations in a cluster. Consider a cluster of n shards uh, where we have some client that makes a request to, to shard 1. The chart uh, scatters this request to all of the other shards in the cluster, aggregates the partial responses, and then returns the aggregated results uh, to the client. So a more optimal way to implement this pattern would be to first send the query to all of the shards as we did before and collect the futures in, in a vector. But then instead of waiting until all of the shards return a result, uh, try to aggregate the, the partial results as soon as they come. To achieve this, we can use uh, future select all, which returns partial results uh, as soon as they are received from the, from the shard and allows us to process the partial results immediately. This way, we only store the partial result in memory and there is no need to first hold the, hold the partial results and then return them to the client. Uh, this approach significantly reduces the, the memory pressure on the co coordinator node and it allows us to use large, large partial results without um, any issues or with, with less issues. Next, uh, let's look at how uh, we can optimize the memory layout of our collections to, to improve the latency of, of function calls. Consider a, a function that computes uh, distances uh, given some data matrix and, and some query. So uh, this function takes a data matrix, which is in this case represented as a vector of vectors, takes some query, and then uh, returns a distance for all of the rows in this data matrix. A naive implementation in this case just iterates over the data matrix, uh, calls the distance function for each row and the query, and then collects the distances into the vector. Uh, an issue with this approach, however, is that because we store the data matrix as a vector of vectors, uh, each row in the, in the data matrix can be stored at an arbitrary location in memory, right? So accessing first uh, element in this matrix uh, fetches the vector, but then the second element in the, uh, in the matrix uh, could be at some other location, which is not already cached uh, in the CPU cache. To alleviate this issue, we can change the data layout to instead store uh, all of the rows in a continuous chunk of memory so that when we iterate over the matrix uh, rows in sequence, uh, we can leverage some uh, CPU prefetching and, and use more cache optimal access. Implementing this is fairly straightforward, where we take the dimension of the, of the data and then uh, query individual rows uh, based on their offset in the data matrix. Using this layout eff uh, effectively results uh, in the following, following memory uh, layout where the fetching the first element actually prefetches the next vectors into the CPU cache so that when our distance computation function goes and tries to compute the distance on the second element is in, in this data matrix, it's already in the CPU cache and so that latency of accessing this element is much, much lower compared to fetching this memory from some arbitrary uh, location in RAM. Comparing these two functions uh, shows that by storing the data in the continuous chunk of memory, we can actually achieve roughly two and a half times better latencies, regardless of the dimension of our data. As a third example, we will look at uh, implementing custom SIMD kernels, also for distance computations. For this example, I chose a dot product, uh, dot product metric, uh, which takes two vectors, uh, computes uh, element-wise product of their components, and then adds all of the products together. Mm. Benchmarking these functions shows that uh, for a vector of flows with 8,000 dimensions, we can get roughly uh, four microseconds latency per function call. Mm. Let's look at how we could speed, it, uh, speed this function up using uh, AVX2 instructions, which are available on x86 uh, Intel and AMD processors. To start things off, we'll get uh, pointers to our vectors a and b and uh, compute n, which is uh, the length of a or b divided by eight. Uh, the division by eight here is because uh, AVX2 can hold 256 bits in memory, which effectively means eight floats at a time. Also, this function assumes that uh, that dimension of a and b is a multiple of eight, uh, just for the sake of this example. <clears throat> 
uh, we'll also initialize an accumulator uh, that's set to zeros, and that's also eight floats. Next, we'll iterate over these vectors and uh, fetch eight tuples of uh, A and B, and use uh, fuse multiply add function to first multiply uh, A8 and B8 uh, element wise, and then add it to the accumulator also element wise. Uh, after we are done with this, we need to horizontally reduce the accumulator to get a single flow that represents the dot product. To achieve this, we first take the lower half and upper half uh, of this accumulator vector using the extract float uh, 128, which effectively extract, uh, extracts 128 bits uh, of this accumulator vector, then add it together and transmute these results into a vector of four floats. Uh, finally, we add these four floats together, which represents the final dot product. So let's try and benchmark this function. As you can see, uh, Rust compiler is pretty good at vectorizing our naive loopy code, and actually our naive implementation by uh, compiling it with O3 achieved the same, same performance as uh, our explicitly implemented uh, kernel for this function using SIMD instructions. Surely, uh, there must be a better way to implement this function so that we can leverage a better throughput from our uh, CPU, right? The issue with this approach is that because we are using one accumulator and fuse multiply add has a latency of four cycles, uh, essentially each consecutive call to the fuse multiply add needs to wait until the previous call finishes. This means that even though the data is available, we are not uh, able to effectively utilize the pipeline parallelism that's available in the CPU. A better approach is to uh, try and explicitly exploit this, this parallelism that's available in the CPUs. And to do that, we'll again start by uh, getting n and pointers to both data arrays. But instead of initializing just one accumulator, we will now initialize four accumulators for, for the partial results. Next, uh, we'll iterate over the, the data vectors, again, by eight tuples. But uh, now, for each vector, we'll load not just one eight tuple, by, but four eight tuples for all of the accumulators. The same uh, will be done for the, for the other vector, vector B. And then uh, instead of uh, using just one fuse multiply add on one accumulator, we'll use uh, four fuse multiply adds for all of the four accumulators that we previously initialized. Uh, the important note here is to, is to say that uh, there is no dependency between the individual fuse multiply add calls, so that there is, the data from one fuse multiply add doesn't need to wait from data uh, from the other fuse multiply add. Finally, uh, we'll first uh, aggregate the, the partial accumulators into one accumulator of eight floats. And then same as in the previous case, uh, we will take the lower half and the upper half, add them together, uh, transmute that into four floats, and finally reduce this result uh, into a single float, which represents the dot product. Benchmarking this approach uh, shows that by effectively leveraging this uh, instruction level parallelism, we are able to achieve roughly two times the throughput of this dot product function uh, than before. Uh, and this is also better than what the Rust compiler gives us by vectorizing our naive loopy code. In the last example, uh, I would like to look at uh, how we can implement our own custom data layouts for, uh, for custom collections that we might implement. Let's assume that we are trying to implement a tree uh, of, of some sort. Uh, where each node in that tree has some key, some value, and some uh, children, which are also nodes of that tree. A naive approach would be to store the key as a vector of, of bytes, uh, store the value as whatever the size of value is, and then store children as a vector of, of nodes, uh, which are generic over t. Because the vector needs to store uh, its size or its length, its capacity, and the, and the data itself, uh, its effective size is 24 bytes because the capacity of eight is eight bytes, the length is eight bytes, and also pointer to the data is eight bytes. For this example, I'm assuming that the data is U32, which is four bytes. And then because children is also a vector, uh, its size is also 24 bytes. This effectively means that the aligned size of one single node in our, in our tree is 56 bytes. Trying to optimize this a bit more, we can notice that the key doesn't change, uh, 
uh, or we can assume if we know that the key in our tree doesn't change, we can change its type from, from vector to box, which now doesn't need to store the capacity uh, because its capacity is the same as its length. And so we are able to save uh, eight bytes uh, in total for, for storing the key. And we only store the length, which is eight bytes, and then the pointer to the data, which is also eight bytes. Uh, nothing else changes, so it's still four bytes for the value and uh, 24 bytes for children. Using, using this layout uh, gives us 48 bytes, uh, or a line size of 48 bytes for one single node in our tree. We can notice that uh, it's also likely not necessary to store the capacity for children because uh, we can make some assumptions on, on the data layout and know that we'll only ever store as many children as we need, and we won't ever store uh, more capacity, for example, for future inserts. This introduces some inefficiency in case we want to modify this vector because we will need to reallocate the data, but it will help us to save memory. We can introduce a separate structure for children, uh, which will store the data in a, in a single continuous array where the first eight bytes of, of that uh, memory chunk will be the length, and uh, next n bytes will be, will be the children itself. Using this layout uh, essentially means that the children has now size of eight bytes because it's just a single pointer to the data. And using that uh, inside the node essentially means that now the aligned size of the whole node struct is only 32 bytes. 32 bytes. Okay, that's, that's pretty good, but surely we can take this idea of using custom layouts uh, a bit further. We can, we can apply the same idea to the whole node where uh, instead of storing um, individual fields as, as a separate field in the struct, we can use the packed layout because we, we know the layout of the, of the node that we want and store everything as a single pointer um, to some chunk of memory. And then, of course, we will need to implement our own parsing for this memory layout so that we, can, we are able to correctly access uh, individual elements. Using this approach uh, allows us to achieve uh, the align sites for one node of only eight bytes. And uh, finally, let's compare how, how this fares uh, with respect to some other standard collections in, in Rust standards library. Uh, I implemented uh, a Radix uh, map and Radix set uh, using the methods I described previously and compared its performance on two, two data sets. We can see that the reallocations that are caused by storing only the length and not the capacity as well are not that significant because for uh, the data set one, we can see that our uh, Radix tree set is actually faster than both hash set and p tree set. And for data set two, we are only uh, slightly slower than uh, the p tree set, which is the fastest collection for this data set. But again, we are uh, getting much better, uh, much better performance in terms of uh, the memory footprint of this collection. Uh, that's all from me, and uh, thank you for coming to this presentation.